the power of satan it is in his lie but the power of god it is in the truth jesus never said the truth will set you free he clearly said you shall know the truth afterwards the truth will set you free The Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 4 verses starting from 1 until verse number 13. Jesus full of the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days. And at the end of them, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor, for it has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. So, if you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered. It says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time. All of us, we are bound to face temptations in our lives, whether you like it or not. No one is exceptional. As long as we live in this world, no matter how old we are, until the point of death, till we make an exit from this world, we are bound to face temptations. To be tempted is not sin. To yield to the temptation, that's going to be sinful. So the Bible teaches you and me how we can be equipped and empowered by knowing the truth, the word of God, so that we can stand against the wicked schemes of Satan. I'd like to repeat myself as I've been saying from last week. Without knowing the word, you can never mean business with the devil. You have nothing to do with the devil. You cannot fight him. You cannot resist him. Because you have no power. Satan is the spirit of lie. The Bible would like to give a label to him as the father of lies. And he speaks from his own. The power of Satan, it is in his lie. But the power of God, it is in the truth. Jesus never said, the truth will set you free. He clearly said, you shall know the truth. Afterwards, the truth will set you free. So our duty is to learn the word of God and learn it diligently to the extent we understand the word and we walk according to the word of God. And then the knowledge of God's word will set you and me free. Can somebody say an amen? amen. And the first temptation I did say last week, in our desperate need, the devil would like to attack us. In our desperate physical need, is very selective about people and the timing 
And he knows our weakness. Some of our weakest moments. Our weakness can now be a weakness once we learn the art of relying upon the strength of God. Because the Lord promised, in your weakness, my strength will be made perfect in abundance. Amen? So we don't need to fight the devil with our strength, but we can fight the enemy with the strength of the Lord. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I would like to define my strength based on who he is rather than who I am. Because my identity comes from Jesus Christ, so yours. It's no longer me, but it is Christ who lives in me. Can somebody say an amen? amen. So here the devil says, you are desperately in need of something. You've got to eat something. You are hungry. And his voice is so subtle and demonic in nature. Saying, I'm more concerned about you. You like to magnify the physical need. And you will tempt us to meet the need at the expense of violating our spiritual nature. Remember, always I told you to be beware of suggestions. Suggestions are very powerful. You must be able to discern and identify the source of these suggestions that attack our mind. And many, many times we don't have that ability in our spirit to discern. That is our problem. The word of God says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 14, very clearly, solid meat is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Not everybody. That's why I say, if you want to develop your strength spiritually and mentally, spend more time with the word of God. Qualitative time with the word of God is a must. And then you must know God's written word. Listening to a sermon is good. Singing a song is good. The Bible says we must know the written word of God. For every temptation, there is an answer directly from God's word. It's when you do not know the written word of God, and that's when you get defeated. The Bible says so beautifully all the time, when the devil tempted Jesus, it simply says, he, the Bible says, Jesus, answer. Say with me, Jesus, Jesus. Answer. answer. My friend, I want to ask you one question. Do you have an answer in your mouth ready when the devil comes against you? There's no fun, I know, just no shouting, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. God says, shut up and read your Bible. I gave you the word. Say amen. amen. <laughs> Don't make unnecessary noise. Get a mean business through the word of God. Stop shouting and screaming. Get into the word. Know my written word. My word is like a two-edged sword. My word is spirit and life. My word is truth. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. That's what the word of God says in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14. They train themselves to distinguish good from evil. As far as godliness is concerned, we got to know we must be trained in terms of godliness. And nothing else will ever do the job except knowing and understanding and walking according to the word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16 so beautifully says, Every scripture is God-breathed. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness, so that a man of God will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen? I want to let you know this morning, you have a devil to fight against. This is not optional. You can't tell Satan, I don't trouble you. You don't trouble me. Let's maintain our boundaries. No. He's after you. He's like a roaring lion. All that he wants is just one chance to kill your life. 
the bible says the enemy comes to steal to kill and to destroy but the word of god says jesus came to give life and life more abundantly a lot of people live life but not in abundance you must live life in abundance amen to have life is one thing and to have life in abundance it's totally a different thing jesus answered the devil saying man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of god every word from god's mouth matters the most do you understand what i'm talking about yes or no jesus was saying here my father is more than enough to meet my need who are you devil to bring about a suggestion that i should convert the stones into bread do you understand what i'm talking about jesus did a lot of miracles you read the bible he raised the dead he healed the lepers medically it was impossible those times the word of god says he took just five loaves and two fish and multiplied and fell the multitudes it's not that jesus could not do any miracles the question here is where the suggestion comes from every time you act on something ask for yourself one question where does this suggestion comes from where does it come from is it coming from god or from the devil or it is my own understanding bible also says do not lean on your own understanding but acknowledge god in all your ways we need to discern hallelujah exercise a discernment can i say something it may be shocking to you no matter how good you are educated how powerful your intellect is but still i want to tell you if you do not know what it means to exercise your spirit the devil can knock you down i have seen some of the highly educated people being in bondage because they trust their intellect too much your intellect is nothing the devil has more wisdom than you you need the wisdom of god in your spirit in order to fight against the demonic powers that fight against you your family your marriage and your children in the supernatural realm hallelujah we are called the children of god because god lives I'll say romans 8:14 those who are being led by the spirit of god are called sons of god you are the temple of the holy spirit and god lives in you jesus knew for sure i may have a need i may be hungry i may be desperate but it doesn't mean the devil i'm going to stretch my hands to you not take suggestions from you you understand what i'm talking about my father is more than sufficient to meet all my needs hallelujah in fact i can live by every word that comes out of the mouth of god the word is more than enough for me i don't need to really live by bread i asked you one question is it the bread or the word which one you want a word you can live without bread but not without a word amen the word is the power to affect your soul your spirit your body your heart and mind and the word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path without word you have nothing without word you are not connected to god in any way word brings the connection between you and god word means everything to you god does everything through his word god glorifies his word and his name about everything else hallelujah so know the word my friend i want to tell you right now say say said last week also god has given everything you and i need for our life and godliness that means we have a sufficient god amen on the cross when jesus died and finally when he shouted it is finished what did he mean you know i've done everything that must be done that must be executed on the cross i have finished it for my children's sake amen, amen. so now i have died my children shall live i became a curse now you are going to be a blessing amen. i died so that you can have life in fullness amen, amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah you know i took the wounds of my hands all over my body in my legs but he said by my wounds you would be healed 
how beautiful it is when the bible says 700 years prior to jesus coming into this world through the prophet isaiah he said in isaiah chapter 53 surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows though we considered him stricken by god smitten by him and afflicted but he was pierced for our no my transgressions that's personal amen and the bible says and the punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed hallelujah, hallelujah. my sufficiency is in jesus christ a lot of people get attacked by the devil because they are after opportunities in other words the devil provides an opportunity to jesus christ you can make a mistake you may have resources you may have money you may have the skill you may have everything but still if you act according to the suggestion of the devil you blow it up that's why we need to be very careful no matter what you you have in your life in terms of money finance wealth position title name fame your talent all those things you need to have that humility before god saying lord all these things are given to me i'm going to be a good steward i will neither move my hand nor my leg without a word from you i want to use everything that you have given to me according to the direction that you have given to me from above amen? amen the suggestion may come from the devil in fact the devil said you have the power what did he say he said you have the power use that power in other words he was trying to say try to live an independent life from god live a god dependent life every moment depend upon god amen i want to move on to the second temptation the bible says words number five the devil led him up to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and he said to him i'll give you all their authority and splendor for it has been given to me and i can give it to anyone i want to so if you worship me it will all be yours somebody speaks well a lot of us could be convinced that's a problem because you do not know the truth they raise their voice a little bit and have a good commanding language and keep on talking oh you think that's right no truth is always discerned in your spirit hallelujah, hallelujah. say amen. amen here the devil led him up to a high place the bible says he showed him in an instant the kingdoms of the world along with it all their authority and splendor take note of what i'm saying first the devil before he could speak what he, what, what does he do he showed him in a flash of a second all the kingdoms of the world and their authority and splendor here he shows something before he could speak something before he could speak something now he shows something he says boy just hold on just come have a look at the whole thing the bible says he showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor authority have a good look jesus have a good look if you have a photographic memory better you just keep everything in mind he showed him everything the money, the authority, the gold, the silver, name, fame. Not in one nation, but all the nations of the world. Then he came to a deal saying, If you worship me, it will all be yours. Everything has been given unto me. And he says, I can give to anyone I want to. I want you to pass for a moment and look at what the devil has to say. He says, for it has been given to me and I can give with to anyone I want to. Can devil give you wealth, money, name, fame, titles, authority, splendor? Yes, he can. Now why in the world do you think? You know, most of the celebrities in the world, they have, oh my goodness. 
you can look at the videos in the, the life of a celebrity. Billionaire's lifestyle. You can find that in the YouTube. Madness of riches. The devil can give to anybody he would like to. But then he says something here. It's going to be all yours if you worship me. If you worship me. Listen carefully. The devil would like to give you anything that you want to. Even if it means all the kingdoms of the world. Provided you stop worshipping God. And you start worshipping the devil. You can trade your worship with the devil for money and wealth. A lot of people for the sake of money, they are left behind their faith, their relationship with God and moved into the world. Money is not everything. If you are money minded, today the spirit of God is speaking to you. Be God minded. Amen. Do not be driven by money. Do not allow the money to decide your priorities. Money is not bad. The love of money is very bad. That's a root cause for all evils. Buddha said, desire is the root cause for all evil. But the Bible says, love of money, the desire for money is the root cause for all evil. Money is a good servant, but a very bad master. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? Why do we look up to? We look up to God. We say, Jehovah Jera. What does it mean? My God is my provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In any and every situation, I'm going to lift up my eyes towards the hills of heaven because I know and I know and I know where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. There will not even for a moment, I'm going to turn my eyes off from my loving Savior and look up to you. Because my Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My father has given me his son. He gave his one and only son the darling of heaven. He sent him into this world for my sake to be crucified on the cross. What else he will not give? I have received the best in my life. Because I have Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not trade your worship for money. Say, no I can't come to church because I got work. So what's going to happen? If you have to work on all Sundays till you die. That means you will not come to church. It's all about priority in your life. You can never have one unless until you first decide the values. Your values by default determines your priority. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Amen? Your priority is an outcome of your value system. That's why Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the other things shall be added. Worship is not a free time activity. It's an act of priority. Worship is going to be a priority when your focus is right. When your priority is right. Here the devil is trying to turn away the focus of Jesus. All the time you look unto the Father. Before you could do any miracle, the Bible says you will look to the Father. In fact, Jesus said the Son can do nothing by himself. He has power. He has authority. He has everything at his disposal. His name is about every other name. One word out of his mouth will make the impossible a possibility. But still he wouldn't. Unless until the father tells him to do. Amen. And he said the father shows him what he must do. He even said John 12 verse 49 50. My father teaches me what to say even how to say. Even the words, he was very careful that he would speak only as he learns from the Father. Amen? 
people who can listen better, they can speak better. If you do not have the habit of listening, that you cannot speak effectively. And the word of God says here, the enemy was trying to turn his focus away. It's enough looking at the Father. Now look at the world. Look at the world. Look at the things of the world. Maybe, you know, you and I, we are going to be tempted on a daily basis to do just that. How long will you worship? How long will you keep on reading the Bible? So what do we do? Look to the world and the things of the world. One of the sickening things with the people of God around the world is, for devotion we come to the Lord, for delight, for entertainment we go to the world. The man who takes delight in the word of God meditates upon the word day and night. Why he would do that? For him it's entertainment. Amen. For him it's a delight. He loves what he does. He loves reading his Bible. He loves spending hours together in the presence of God. And he shouts and screams because the Bible says in the tents of the righteous that shall be shouting and rejoicing. He knew for sure out of his belly shall flow the rivers of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He knows that heaven is opened above him. He has a different perspective. The saint doesn't have any need to go to the world for the sake of entertainment. Just think for a moment. How do you spend your free time? Or when you are alone? That gives you an answer. Whether you turn to God or you turn to the world for entertainment. I want to tell you something. When you turn to the world for delight and entertainment, it's difficult to come back to God in terms of devotion. Nobody can serve two masters. Our God is lovely. Loving God is fun. You understand what I'm saying? Worshipping God is fun. Hallelujah. Reading Bible is fun. The Bible says... Uh, Wisdom is sweet to your soul. David, when he prays to God, he says, Open the eyes of my heart to see the treasures in your word. That's more than money. More than wealth. They find the treasure in the word of God. Amen? The Bible says, Mary chose to be at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he would say. That's a miracle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every moment you would spend time with Jesus Christ in terms of prayer, in terms of worship, in terms of reading the word of God, in terms of doing the ministry, let me say in the name of Jesus, that time is invested for all eternity. The question here is, do I invest time in eternity? So if you change your focus, worship is going to be difficult. Some interesting verses. Psalm 17.24, you can turn if you want. A discerning man keeps wisdom in view, but a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. But a fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. The Bible talks about in the book of James, uh, you know, when you meditate the word, a man looking intently into the word of God, the Bible says here, the eyes of the fool wander to the ends of the earth. The question here is, and you need to understand first here, do not be led by what you see. Be led by what you believe. Amen? Beat your eyes and beat your ears. It must be regulated as far as its use is concerned. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job says, I have made a covenant with my eyes that I will not look at a woman lustfully in my heart. He talks about making a covenant with the members of his body. Just because you have eyes, that doesn't mean that you can see whatever you want to see. Am I talking to somebody? Just because you have ears, that doesn't mean that you can listen to anything you want to listen. The Bible says when the wise man listens, he listens and adds to his learning. In other words, you like to listen only that would benefit him, that would edify him. So he knows fully when to listen and when not to listen. When to see, when he should not see. Hallelujah. Yes or no? Job says, now I made a covenant with my eyes. 
That means he talks about a code of functioning for his eyes. Covenant would always define boundaries to your life. When you have a married covenant, that means you know, we have boundaries prescribed by the covenant. I will not look at any man or woman until death shall do us apart. You need to ask one question. Do I have a problem in seeing? Your eyes roll all around. Then there's going to be something wrong. If you have seen the horse, they have blinders, right? So they, it should not see everything. It must see only where the rider wants the horse to see. I think sometimes we need to have those blinders in our eyes spiritually so that we will not see what we should not see. Rather, we will see what we must see. Open the eyes of my heart that I want to see you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Your eyes must be guided by your heart. There's another powerful verse. You can read that as well. I think it's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 2 verse 14. It says the wise man has eyes in his head. While the fool walks in the darkness. The wise man has eyes in his head. What does it mean? The Bible says he thinks before he could direct his eyes. His eyes are used to the code of functioning. His eyes have values. Now do you remember the song that we all grew up singing in our Sunday school? Two little eyes, be careful. What do you see? And the father up above is looking down below. So be careful two little eyes about what you see. The Bible talks about Eve. When she saw the forbidden fruit, the Bible says it was pleasing to the eye. Temptations are not sickening always. I want to tell you that when the devil would like to bring forth the temptation in your life, he would like to bring it in such a way that you would like it. When you look at that, you will never say, I don't like it. The Bible says, though God said, when you eat the forbidden fruit, you shall surely die. But still the Bible says, the same fruit, Eve had a look, and still she found that pleasing to the eye, desirable for gaining wisdom, and good for food. The Bible says, the fool's eyes wander to the ends of the earth. Take it up your eyes. The Bible says here, the devil showed Jesus Christ in an instant all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. By the way, let me tell you, when you talk about the glory of God, even the world has its own splendor. It has its own glory. When I look at the world, yes, they have everything, billions of dollars. They do amazing things. The devil said, I will give you all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Can I say something? If you are somebody who focus on what you get, rather than keeping the, your priority as worshipping God, then you can be knocked down by the devil. Your worship to God is your first priority. Then what you get and what you don't get. You understand what I'm talking about? Shetrak, Mesha, Abed, Noah, they said, our God is able to deliver us. Even if he doesn't do so, we want you to know we will not bow down and worship this image. In other words, they were trying to say it's not even worth being alive when we fail in our worship to God. That's the reason a lot of people lay their lives down, spill their own blood, the martyrs. Many nations across the world, right from the disciples of Jesus Christ, I want to let you know, this earth has drunk the blood of the martyrs. And all this blood are crying out to the heavenly father for a mighty and great revival. Hallelujah. Worship must be your priority. When you come to church, you must believe and understand. Yes, I come to worship God. You are not visiting a place. You are not coming for ritual. If you do not know what it means to worship, it's a waste coming to church then. The one thing that we are going to do forever and ever in the eternal kingdom, which has already begun now, I want to tell you, it's worship, it's worship, it's worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We we'll worship the Lamb and the Lion who is seated on the throne in an unapproachable light, 
forever, forever and ever. Hallelujah. We need to be passionate about worship. The devil will like to do anything in order to stop your worship. That's why he will not allow you to come to church on time. Work on that first. When you come to church on time, he will not allow you to sing. He will not allow you to lift your hands or open your mouth. He will distract you. Because he doesn't like worshiping God. He craves for worship. He will attack any believer, anybody for that matter. And he will give you what will be your price. Compromises are done according to the prices that we seek. Every man, every woman has his or her price. We may not compromise for little things, but when it comes to big things, a big gain, some people they don't mind. The devil would like to give you the price that you seek just to keep you away from God. You may even have one convincing reason all the time till you die why you cannot keep God first or the worship to God first and always fool yourself. But I want to tell you how God deserves the first place in our lives. Amen. Amen. Seek first the kingdom of God. Do not allow your soul to be led by what you see. In other words, I would like to tell you, choose what you see. Choose what you listen. That's very important. Amen. The third temptation here. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. For it is return twice no hmm? he never said it is written until now he says it is written he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone can the devil use bible i think so he knows the scripture the point is, you must know the scripture better than the devil. And we'll know it better because our teacher is different. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, We have not received the spirit who is from the world, but we have received the spirit who is from God, that we may freely understand what is given to us. Always remember, wisdom is power. Devil doesn't have wisdom. The wisdom is with you and me. The Bible says in the book of Job 28, you find there, wisdom is not found in the land of the living. That means the wisdom is only with God. Only God knows the way to wisdom. The Bible says if anyone wants wisdom, let him ask unto God who gives without being partial. Amen. So he has given us the Holy Spirit to teach us the word so that you can know the scripture so powerfully. Let it be like a two-edged sword in your mouth all the time. You need to answer the devil with the written word of God. Can somebody say an amen? amen? If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. The first temptation is all about the lust of flesh. Turn the stones into bread. The second one is all about the lust of the eyes. The third one is about the pride of life. If you are the son of God, some people do not know who they are. Invariably, they have the pride of life. By way of conversation, they'll always like to talk about what they have, who they are, what is their family line. Better the other person know who I am. Pride of life. Be careful. The more you talk about yourself and what you have, it's nothing but the pride of life. Finally, they will say, all glory to God. You're talking about yourself more than talking about God, and you say, all glory to God. If you are the son of God, who said he was not? First place. If, 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 do you see the attack? The devil will like to implant a seed of doubt in your mind all the time. That's why when you read the Bible, it's not good enough that you just collect information. What you need the most in your life, you must have revelations implanted in your heart with deep convictions. Hallelujah. The word of God must be received with conviction. People listen, but they don't have convictions in their life. That's a problem. 
In other words, you need to work hard in studying the word of God to the extent that you have the overwhelming conviction of God's word. And that's only when the word of God can get rooted in your heart. Where do you have your roots? If it's going to be in God, it will not be shaken. David said, I keep the Lord always before me. I will not be shaken. I will not be uprooted. The devil says here, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. Did you feel compelled at any time to prove yourself to somebody? We all have the temptation, right? Sometimes uh, we are caught in a kind of situation where we are compelled to prove who we are. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down. That means to you know, demonstrate your power and authority. Let the whole world know really you are who you claim yourself to be. Not necessarily. Don't try to prove yourself to anybody. You are just who you are. Your worth, your significance, your greatness, your talents, your gifts, your identity. You are not bound by anyone to prove yourself to anybody. I am what I am by the grace of God. I know who I am. And also I know who, in whom I believe. I know my Redeemer lives. I don't need to do all this spiritual gymnastics to prove to you devil that I am really the son of God. Because my father, when I took baptism in the river of Jordan, through the hands of John the Baptist, the heaven was open. The Bible says, the father himself declared, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hallelujah. And the word of God says in the book of John 13, Jesus knew where he came from and where he was going. Hallelujah. People know who they are in Christ. They are not forced to prove themselves to anybody else. Or what you accomplished in the past, do not give your identity. Your identity comes from God Almighty. Amen. I am what I am because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am the product of his death and his resurrection from the grave. That's what who I am. One word that could define me, you can say, I am the product of his death and resurrection. That's what who I am. Hallelujah. Throw yourself down. And he's using the word for it is written. How do you know whether it's the devil quoting the scripture or I'm not talking about your wife or husband, but in the spirit realm, right? Quoting the scripture. How do you know it's from God or from the devil? The Bible says. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. Don't you know that you are God's temple? You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Who is in you, whom you have received from God. Hallelujah. I don't go by what I see. I go by the inner witness of the Holy Spirit through the light of God's word. Hallelujah. That's why every vision, every dream, every prophecy must be tested before it is received. Amen. Don't come and tell me. You went to this prophet and that prophet. They spoke this. They... No you are a child of God. Test every prophecy. Every dream. Every vision. And see whether it's from God or it's from the devil. Because the Bible says this word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. Even it's going to be your own pastor prophesying something. Know for sure that's in line with the word of God. Hallelujah. Being a good man of God, a pastor, a shepherd, I would like to draw you more to God's word and to the Holy Spirit than to drawing you to myself. I may be with you for a season. I may not be with you forever. But the word will remain with you. This is the word. This is the foundation that you must Build your life upon. Somebody shout an amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered. All this three times is so amazing. The Bible says Jesus answered. When you read the Bible carefully. When you spend quality time with the Holy Spirit of God. The Spirit of Truth. Equipping yourself. Empowering yourself with the Word of God. I want to tell you. Even before you could face temptation. In any given day. God's going to put His Word right in your heart. In your mouth. Like a bullet. 
Hallelujah. Like a missile. You understand what I'm saying? At any time, in any given moment, Jesus was ready with a word. God gets you ready with an answer. Hallelujah. One word, the devil was out. Sometimes we do not know the word of God, the truth of the living word of God. That's the reason our battles are being prolonged time and again. The battle must be won just by one word, by saying, it is written, that's over. The devil will leave you and go. But you do not know the word. You are just simply shouting, screaming. You just take the Bible and you are just singing songs. Hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord. And he will say, amen, 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 because he knows you do not know the word. You are just simply singing. That's what the word of God says. Do not give the devil a foothold. Devil can operate in our lives only when there's a legal ground for him to operate. Amen. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to be more God conscious. Getting rooted in the word of God. You are light and he is darkness. Amen. The one who is in you is the king of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the lion of Judah. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus answered. It says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Counter attack. And it's time to speak the word. Don't sing a song. Hello? There's a time to speak. There's a time to act. Because the devil is bombarding your life, intimidating your heart, your mind with a lot of lies, anxieties and worries. But you don't have the word in your heart, in your mouth. It's time to get equipped with the word of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Study your Bible. It doesn't pay off just coming to church for a lifetime, just going away, giving your tithes and offerings. I want to tell you, I love you. Spend quality time with the word of God. Know the written word of God. Be like children. Let your children know that you know God's written word. Amen. Parents, when you pray, use the scripture and pray. By heart God's word as families. Husband and wives, I want to tell you, team up and learn the word together. Young people, team up. Hallelujah. Ignorance is expensive. You understand what I'm saying? You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Process the information very well. God gives you wisdom more than the devil. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I'm no less than the devil. I'm much higher than the devil. Amen. Devil is not my equal or your equal. The Bible says, Ephesians 3 turn, the manifold wisdom of God be made known to the rulers and authorities in the spiritual realms through the church. In other words, God, instead of demonstrating his power to the demons, Satan, and the spirit world, he says, I'm going to demonstrate it through you. I'm not going to show it directly, but I'm going to use my human vessels. Hallelujah. Those who are created in the image of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, I'm going to fill them with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to put my word, the two-edged sword, right in their mouth, and they're going to demonstrate my power to the dark evil forces in the spiritual realm. That's the reason when we open our mouth and cast our demons, they go. We break bondages, people are set free. Amen. Demons, listen. And obey us. Why? They are not our equals. You understand what I'm saying? You are the power. You are the wisdom. You have the Holy Spirit of God living in you. You have the word of God right in your mouth. Hallelujah. You are light. And he is darkness. And all the powers of heaven is vested at your disposal. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound from heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed from heaven. Hallelujah. God is waiting for you to just spell that word. Say that word so that the heaven's powers can be unleashed at your command in Jesus' name. You are somebody special. Know who you are. Know yourself according to God's word. You can overcome temptations. You can be a winner. Hallelujah. It's not by your strength, but by his strength. Answer the devil. It is written. And so answer him. And defeat him with the word of God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Everybody. Come on. Hallelujah.
Praise you, Jesus. Musicians, come on. Hallelujah. your hands I want to pray for you right now everyone Father God I want to thank you for all those who are praying along with me not only here in this sanctuary and even those who are watching us through the television in the most powerful name of Jesus I pray God touch them by your power we can be a winner if there is somebody who says Oh, I cannot win. I'm a failure in some area of my life. Lord, this morning I believe it's not about our strength. It is about your strength, oh God. Touch my sister. Touch my brother. Who would it be, oh God? This morning I pray in the name of Jesus. The one who was buried but raised on the third day for our sins. Hallelujah. I claim the resurrection power right now to be unleashed upon their lives their soul and their spirit and in their body wherever oh god they need the deliverance right now i speak the resurrection power even a lot of people who watch us through the television uh, across the globe i pray in jesus name uh, oh let the river of god flow right into this spirit every bondage be broken every spirit uh, that's behind every bondage in the name of jesus i break your power i break your power in the name of jesus oh i speak for freedom i speak for the liberty i speak for the deliverance to everybody who pray along with me in the most powerful name of jesus i call it down in the name of jesus their lives will now be the same victory on the cross and the resurrection of jesus from the dead is my victory it is our victory and we can be winners and victorious forever we give you glory honor power and praise in jesus most powerful name we pray